Welcome everyone to Shaper Sessions. My name is Jake. And I'm Russ. And today we are talking about Calverbender. Calverbender. Yes. Quick connection system using Shaper Origin. Yep. It is something that, uh, w it's a system that we will be selling on our store. Mm -hmm. uh, ShaperTools.com. Very soon. And so we wanted to take today to dive into how we use it and what you can do with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. As with all of our shows, this is a Shaper session. We do these live every other Thursday. And during the show, please ask questions in the chat that's going to show up below your uh, video screen. Ted's in the comments today. He's going to be answering as many of the questions via text as he can. And the questions that deserve a demonstration, he'll send to us. We'll do live demonstrations answering your questions at the end of the show. We also do giveaways. We do giveaways in order to get your name in that giveaway wheel. You're going to need to answer that question. It's going to pop up. The question for today is, what hardware do you use most in your shop? Yeah. So this is hardware. We consider it hardware. This is uh, included in the Shaper Hub hardware catalog, which is our digital repository of templates that help you easily install hardware like this using Shaper Origin uh, without needing a drawer full of templates for your plunge router. It's all in the computer, yeah. which is pretty nice. In the computer. And... Uh, Tell us something interesting, not just screws. Give us like, yeah. give us that cool piece of hardware that you that you use that you haven't seen mm -hmm. other people use maybe, or something you really like and it's your go-to thing. Yeah, I think we use hinges more than anything else, specifically sauce hinges. Yeah, but don't just copy us. Right, come up with your own. All right, so Kylo Bender. What even is it? What, that's a mouthful to start I know. with. I, I'm going to say it three different ways this entire show, but it is a essentially a dovetail, sliding dovetail system that is pretty neat and one of the most wonderful fidget toys I can, mm -hmm. uh, can possibly imagine. German, in fact, for dovetail connector. Oh, well, there you go. So uh, Jake's going to hand me some of these. I'll show them off on the bench cam down here, and you can see the keyhole slot here. This is what we're going to be cutting today. And really simply, there's two styles of connector that go with this. You've got either the round single screw connector, or in a second, we'll show you, actually, let's uh, pass the double connector. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is two lined up in a row. You can see these side by side. They also sell a five screw, up to five screw long connector. A little bit dark down there. Let's see if we can get this open. So you can see two of these side by side next to each other. Those are the two configurations. Yeah. So with these two components, the options are kind of limitless in the sense of depending on your material or whether it's end grain or side grain or long grain, whatever your connection is, there's a way to do it. Mm -hmm. And you can see just how solid these connections are. Yeah. I kind of have to push on the bench even to get this to seat. But the beauty of that dovetail is kind of like a tapered dovetail that you cut with Origin. Um, it really draws these two pieces together. So the, uh, the wedge is adjustable by the tension that you put on the screw. The tighter the screw, the tighter your connection is going to be. Um, even though you nail the depth every time with Origin, which is really nice, you don't even have to nail the depth perfectly every time because you do get a little bit of compensation. Yeah. with that screw tension. Yeah. Now, obviously, it is a special bit. That bit is something that we obviously also sell. Um, but it's just a short, stubby dovetail bit. Mm -hmm. um, and then the files have actually already lived on, have been living on Shaper Hub now. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll go over those later on as well. A couple of other ones to show you before we get started. It can go from manufactured wood into hardwood. Mm -hmm. And this is a nice 90-degree joint here can see this there you go a lot of these these demos are in a material called fours color mm -hmm. this one's my favorite very high quality <laughs> mdf and you can see these dovetail keyholes here um and you can get a bunch of them all lined up together you got two and this could be a multi-way joint on that and if you're working with something a little softer or maybe thinner they have an aluminum channel that you can also reinforce that dovetail with mm -hmm. if you so choose. So, yeah, exactly. Rather than cutting that dovetail slot with Origin, you would just cut a nice rectangular channel and screw this aluminum dovetail extrusion into that channel. 
So lots of different ways to do it. Um, we have those keyhole connectors up on the hardware catalog. We've also seen people use these rotationally. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a neat use for the single connectors. We've got a couple of examples that we want to show you today. Yes. So uh, first yeah. off, we've got this stool that we're going to be building today. And this is all built with the Calver benders. Uh, we won't even probably disassemble it. It's all blind connections. Uh, you can't really see what's going on in there, but we are going point. to build another one yeah. today. So you'll see that all as we do it. Um, and then we've got a couple of examples on the computer also of uh, Shaper Hub and some examples from the Calver Bender Instagram page. Yeah. Should we go ahead and hop into that? Yeah. Let's pull those up and show them off. Okay. On, give us just a moment. So on their Instagram, they have a couple of uh, inspirational posts. We see people using this every, everywhere from cabinetry to face frames on the front of drawers, or I'm sorry, um, drawer fronts to furniture. So any mm -hmm. uh, anytime you want to be able to flat pack something or install it on site and mm -hmm. know that it's going to have that nice friction fit, we're good to go. All, All right, right, here so we go. This is... Again, on their Instagram, the bottom of a dining table. Just show the full picture there. And so that this, is really slick. This whole thing could be shipped flat and just slid into place on site. Mm -hmm. Speaking of flat pack, we've also got a really cool project, which is this workbench by our coworker Andy over in Stuttgart. This is uh, all held together with the tension of that belt. Uh, it's actually not using the Calver Bender to hold it up, but when it's disassembled, you can see if we switch to this bottom view, all of those parts are held in place by Calver Bender connections. So they just uh, keyhole right into place and stay where they're supposed to be when you're in transit. Yeah. That's right. us clicking these things over oh, here. They're addictive. Super addictive. We've got another uh, kind of panel style sample over here. So you could use these to hang something like an architectural panel. Pretty cool. Yeah. Great. So, I mean, that gets the point across as much as we can by talking about it. But I think, really, there's no substitute for just cutting a for project. For just showing it, yeah. Right? There's, there's also a ton of different ways to cut these. The easiest way, I'd imagine, or, or a somewhat limiting way, is using a router table. And that gives you that long, straight channel. But mm -hmm. the beauty, once you bring origin into the situation, is you can get those completely blind setups like most of these uh, examples are. Thank yeah, the you. keyhole connections. Got keyhole one more connections over here. and curvatured ones, like, like a twist lock yeah. kind of things. Absolutely. And today we're going to do all of that with Plate. Plate is our universal template for Origin. Um, we're going to go ahead and just cut this project as we have it already all set up. That's the beauty of Plate. You can set up these templates, pull it down from the wall, and those templates are ready to go on Origin the moment you load Origin onto Plate. But then after the break, about halfway through the show, we'll show you how we go through the entire process of setting up Plate from start to finish. We had a couple of questions on that via email uh, this week. Mm -hmm. And then we'll show how to load the Calver Bender template from Shaper Hub Hardware Catalog into Origin. Yeah. And just if you decide to ever follow along, we're working with three-quarter ply, three-quarter three quarter, um, birch ply, and our panels are 16-inch by 16-inch. Mm -hmm. And what's our stretcher? It's uh, 16 inches minus two plywood thicknesses. You know, your you plywood go. thickness is always a little bit variable. I think these pieces of ply are 0.73 inches, so Perfect. two times that, right? Um, I've already marked this out. We're just going to get to cutting, but we have a few more panels later that I'll go through the entire process of marking out and drilling the holes to install the little Calver Bender bits themselves. But, I mean, there's no substitute for just showing everyone how quickly this can work. So we've got this all marked out. I have aligned plate. If we go to the overhead cam, I have aligned plate to the center mark that I've made using the reticle. Make sure to snap that out of the way. And if we pop over to the origin cam here, you can see now how origin has automatically loaded this plate window. If I zoom out, you can see that whole plate workspace. For the, again, for those of you that haven't seen plate in the flesh, it is a fantastic instrument that goes along with Origin and kind of makes, I'm not going to say makes tape obsolete, but makes the whole setup process so much faster to be able to align something based off of your markings directly on your piece. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. We're going to use the reticle today, and we're going to use that quick deploy front fence to align with the edge when we cut the keyhole features underneath the top part of the small stool here. Yeah. And we decided, you know, we could have cut the keyhole features on edge using workstation, mm -hmm. um, but for the setup today, we wanted to use plate primarily, and we just decided to go this way. And I think those keyholes are a little bit stronger also on yeah. the flat side, although you can do it with either. The design guide that shows all of those strength stats is included in that hardware catalog entry. So if you go yeah. to that page, click download all files, you'll have the catalog page for Kyle Verbinder downloaded to your desktop, and you can go in there and look at all those strength numbers in shear, in tension, all of that. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Cut mode. So we're ready to go. Let's give this a quick cut. Just like with any time you're cutting a dovetail, really caught you gotta be really cautious of where you're plunging and where you're retracting. And be nice and steady on your on your way through the cut. In in such you know, you might have seen that. I did just, I just goofed. I was in auto mode and I moved too fast. There you go. So That's... I retracted, but it wasn't where that keyhole actually lands, so we're gonna just continue and go through this again. <laughs> there you go. can be your friend, but you just got to make sure that you are retracting in the right spot. Okay, so that is one. Now we'll just align that reticle with the next mark here. Snap that back up. And since this digital template is in the same space relative to plate every time, when we use that physical marker, we're ready to go. And now I do like auto lock mode for this because it makes sure you move the instant you plunge so you don't get any burning in your keyhole because mm. keyholes are notorious for burning. You're removing a lot of material without much chip evacuation. Yeah. Uh, but you do have to be careful that you don't move faster than auto lock because if you move faster than it, you uh, exit that correction zone and it'll automatically retract which in most cases would save your work but when you're doing dovetails you definitely don't want to do that where you don't expect it yeah but you can see we've got two good keyholes here um i'm gonna go ahead and cut the other side of this also so cool. that we can knock in that centerpiece and next time you step aside could you grab the sandpaper for me oh that's absolutely. the one thing i forgot sanding stick sanding stick or one of those uh festool foam pads that look kind of like a computer mouse one of those would be really great so we'll bring this over this has again already been marked just like the last piece These mft tables really let you clamp and move things nice and quickly which i always appreciate i'm gonna move those just a little bit farther out of the way There we go. And reticle. Align that. Snap it back up. And we're ready to go. I need the origin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a crowded bench today. Yeah. We've got a finished stool and a lot of parts. All right. I'm going to go ahead and cut this one. Let it rip. Now, of course, if you were going into something that was maybe 
especially hard or even if it's just your first time and you want to kind of ease into using the Kaibo Bender cutter, you could, in theory, use an eighth inch bit to clear out some of the material beforehand. Although, honestly, it's a shallow enough cut, it doesn't feel necessary. But again, if you're in a super high stake situation and you wanted to be on the uber safe side, I could understand why. Can I hand this to you? Of course. That's what it's I'm a little for. embarrassing, Jake. I did it again. <laughs> it's okay. Same exact thing. It's called the a... nice thing, though, is that it's not at the bottom of that keyhole. Right. So when this dovetail connector sets in this keyhole, it is going to sit exactly where it needs to be, and it is going to be supported all the way around. We've just got a little bump in the road on the way from the installation point to home. But... Let's install this. Let's knock all this together. I marked the top. Here you always want to keep the same reference for all of your locating edges. We're going to just drop that connector in there. Push that forward. That seats really nicely. I love Beautiful. that. Beautiful. And just totally flush with that front edge. Yeah, let's unclamp this so that we can flip it around, knock that other side in, and uh, show all of that. Here, can I give you this one? There we go. And, uh, you know, why don't I just clamp this again? That felt really good, pushing it all together. There we go. Let's do this. I like this design, too, because it makes this cross brace totally captive. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Once we put the top on, I mean... Yeah, exactly. That's why we did the keyholes this direction rather than the other direction. Um, because once we get the top on, this cross piece is going to be exactly completely captive. So that's where we start. Sorry, Ned, didn't realize you were on the overhead cam there. We can go back to that. Yeah, look at that. There we go. Nice, strong, supported piece. And what we're going to do is we're going to put one, two, three four, five, six caliber bender buttons on the top, and then we'll put six keyholes on the bottom of the, uh, the top piece there. So what do you say we mark that out? Let's do it. So we wanted to just get straight to cutting, but this is really how you start with plate. It's with a ruler or a square and a pencil. I remember too, when I first saw the Kaiba bender system, I was like, you know, it seems like the most daunting part is laying it out or getting the file for it, but really having the hardware file in the, from the hardware catalog makes it really easy, as we'll show you in a, in a minute, the custom anchor point is exactly where you want that final point to be. Mm -hmm. So it just makes kind of the alignment thing in your mind a lot easier And when you're marking it out with pencil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you lay it out with pencil the exact same way on both pieces, that Calver Bender button is going to end up in the exact same place as your Kyle Bender custom anchor point on your origin template. No weird offsets. No weird offsets. No math you have to do in your head. So that makes it really easy. You'll notice when I align that, that I used this edge on both pieces. That's really important. And I'm going to use the outside face here of each panel to use this nice little L template It's going to keep all of those holes a consistent distance away from the face of this panel. And I'm just going to do this by eye. I'm going to sight down that hole. I'm going to find that mark, go right to the center of that mark, and drill some holes. So I'm going to do six of these. And let's get this on. High speed drill mode. There we go. Now, for screws, we're using video is okay. Um, for screws today, we're going to be using number four Phillips heads, but I believe the proper screw is a three millimeter 
wood screw. That's correct? exactly right. Yeah. So Calverbinder specifies a three millimeter Torx head screw. Uh, it just so happens that a three millimeter screw is very closely equivalent to a number four. Uh, we're using Phillips head today because we're absolute heathens. We love Torx whenever we can use it. Um, you'll probably see us cam out a couple of times. That's the classic problem with Phillips head screws today. But uh, yeah, it's really hard to actually kind of define those metric fasteners here in the States, right? So yeah. I ended up buying is, some off of eBay, and we're hoping next time we use them we'll have... Yeah, those will show up. But uh, for today, those those number fours are, are going to work just fine. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So we've got those pilot holes drilled. We're going to do the hot swap over to that Phillips head. And I've got a micro sustainer here <laughs> of my little Calver bender bits that are ready to go. And speaking of screws, again, the, uh, the strength specs for these are in the catalog. But in a way, they depend on the length of the screw that you're using. We're using a nice long, one inch long screw on these. Yeah, I'm gonna pull this up one more time on the origin cam. So you can see how small that is and the amount of screw that's associated. And you know, this is because we're going into the edge of plywood and typically the edge of plywood is the weakest place to screw into it. Let's, uh, and I can hear from Ned, someone's asking for the drill guide again. So yeah, Jake, why don't we show that off? Very nice. What size pilot hole are you going with? That is a, let's see, I think it's a 330 seconds. The other thing too that I just noticed, some of the connectors have these little nubs on the bottom. Yep, that's right. And do you know what those are for? I do know what those are for. Those help you align uh, the larger flat, uh, the long five screw style connectors mm -hmm. with a System 32 hole. Oh. So if you're using these to install shelves, you might put the dovetail connector in your shelf pin hole on the case side, and then you would use the, uh, the aluminum track or cut that dovetail keyway into your shelf so that you can slide that shelf in. That and is it's a really cool. nice way to get a strong hidden shelf connection. Will you hand me the your dish over there? Yeah, here, let's walk through these. That's a great idea. While you're finishing that up. Mm -hmm. Now the little nubs that we're talking about that go into the, a, I imagine a five millimeter hole mm -hmm. that is part of a System 32 are right there. Yep, and you've got uh, one hole Very options nice. for the kind of stock system 32 holes that are in most cabinets. Some cabinets come with two rows of holes. That's what those two two hole products are for. And the other nice thing about those two hole five screw connectors, that's kind of a mouthful, is that they keep those entire connectors completely flat and parallel to each other. Nice. You know, so if you lay out those holes nicely, then you are uh, ready to go. You just drop them in and then you can kind of screw them in without as much care as to how you lay it out and hold that dovetail connector when you attach it. Something else worth mentioning because uh, we made the mistake before we started today. Uh, you don't want to over torque these guys. Mm -hmm. They will crack on you. So make sure before you start your project, before you put it in, figure out your torque spec on your drill and just so it's nice and repeatable. Mm -hmm. I'm going to torque setting one. There on go. this Festool drill, and sometimes not even that. Yeah. You know, you just want that to seat. Okay, so here's this. Can I hand this off to you, Jake? Get it out of the way here. That's half of our stool. Yeah, we really do have a pile here. And now I'm going to mark out those keyways in the top. So you can see our linoleum here. This is Forbo Furniture Linoleum. I love this stuff. It's a great way to so add a cool. pop of color. It just goes on there with contact cement. Uh, Ned, what was that? I heard a question. Name the color. Do we remember what color this is? Mm. <laughs> Rustic <laughs> Avocado, Ned says. I think that's a stretch, but uh, perhaps. They've got a, uh, a catalog with about 
30 colors, I would <laughs> say, and you can get sample chips of all those colors. We've got a wheel of them. It really is a fun... And it's really nice. They're modern all take. modern colors, too. Yeah, modern take on linoleum. It's not the it's not the stuff that used to be covering the floors and the kitchen counters and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's game changer. So, yeah, let's do the overhead camera. The first thing that I'm going to do is mark three quarters of an inch in from each edge. And actually, yeah, I think I'm going to use, just because I like the grain direction this way a little better, I'm going to use this edge three quarters in from each edge that's because i know that based on this l fixture these holes are oh i already made a mistake not three quarter three eighths there it half is. of three quarters i'm going to mark three eighths in because these holes are three eighths from this face so we've got our nice t-square here we'll just mark all the way across three eighths watch the clamps watch the head there we go, and we'll flip it around here. Man, Ned is so much nicer over the mic. Goose just goes, hair. <laughs> hair! <laughs> That's because I've got a head. You've got the hair. <laughs> all right, so we've got three-eighths all the way across both sides now. Um, and then the other thing that I'm going to do is mark from one edge all the way across on both sides, the location, and that's gonna be three, eight, and 16 minus three, so 13 millimeters. And I'm gonna do that, you know, I already forgot also that I'm using the front fence for this, so I didn't even need that 3 eighths line. I did that in the template itself, in plate. But if you're using the reticle, that's what you would do. So. He said millimeters, but he meant inches. Did I say yeah. millimeters? Okay. Yeah, three eighths of a millimeter. If you want to upset some Europeans, as if as if uh, cutting live on sessions isn't isn't daunting and tricky enough, we're doing measuring and marking as well. Laying out live, I know. Really signed us up for a big one today. All right, so we got three, eight, and thirteen inches. Measured from the same side uh, on each, I think, Not at measured. least, I hope. Not measured from the same side. Really? Yeah. You should have said something, I'm man. sorry. <laughs> you let me do that? <laughs> uh, I'm just full of it today. Reference yeah, faces. Yeah, see? It's well, all about your reference faces. Actually, look at this. So you, we did a nice job getting this right to 16 inches square. So we are still at 3, 8, and 13 here. It is all about your reference faces. Usually what I do is I put a nice little arrow. Nice. there for that reference face and that really helps you remember so we can move that off to the side now i'm going to bring a clamp over I'm just going to clamp the top here so that this doesn't move but leaving room for plate and we're actually also going to overhang this and Are the reason why today? is because i want to use a clamp when i do these corners beautiful all right now plate comes with Specially designed clamps to fit in these totally flush channels right here. Um, very key thing about clamps mm -hmm. on plate is you barely need any bit, any any strength on those clamps. You just want to secure it. You're relying on that non-slip surface on the back of plate much more than you are clamp pressure. It's just kind of an insurance policy to make sure it doesn't get too tippy. Yeah, so let's do that. We're going to insert this keyhole here bring that pad up and just not even full two finger grip strength you know just a little twist there on that just enough now when i bring origin over here i've already again set this up but it's in a different workspace so i'm going to go into my workspaces and i'm going to go on the left side here we're going to have a left and a right for each side uh, because we're turning this top around 180 degrees, but we want both sides to slide on in the same direction. We're going to cut across. This is allowing us to use that front fence, and what I've done here is I have located this template three-eighths of an inch from that fence edge in the, in the plate setup. Using that origin. custom anchor point. Using the custom anchor point. So all the work there is done for you. You don't have to do any kind of mental math. It's... And again, for people who are kind of new to plate and working with these style of templates, 
After the break here, we're going to go through and show how to scan, grid, and set up plate for your first time, at least a quick overview. We have a whole show on it that yeah. we recommend you really go back and watch. But just for a quick overview, we'll do that again today. A good refresher. Yeah. All right. So let's get to business here. Back into cut mode. Now, before you start, where is the best place to plunge? You want to plunge right there? I the want to plunge right in the middle of this wide part of the keyhole. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Right there. I'll step away. Another thing that's important to do before you go into a, a kind of high stakes situation like this, double check your auto speed. If you are the kind of origin users that adjust your auto speed, depending on what you're cutting, double check that you are at that default setting or maybe a hair under the default speed, which I believe is somewhere around 10 inches per minute. I say that from experience because sometimes in here at the Shaper Shop you'll walk up to a tool and someone had cranked the auto speed up and that makes for a nice surprise. Beautiful. So for that, right. that center one, you didn't need to use the clamps, right? Or no did... clamps. Okay. No clamps. And I'm just going to flip this around here, go to that other workspace, which is the, the right pointing keyholes, so that after uh, when we assemble these, they're all pointing the same direction, and get back to cutting. Yeah, no, uh, no oops on those, which is nice. Also worth noting, he's keeping the fence out, which normally, anytime you're using plate, the, the anytime you're using plate, the first thing after alignment is to retract your reticle or retract your fence. But in this case, we're not cutting on the outside of our material, so we're not at risk of of uh, of nicking our fence. But just try to remember to retract that fence. <laughs> Right, always remember to retract the fence if you're gonna be cutting past the edge of your material, for sure.
All right. There we go. That's six keyholes. I'm going to put this plate off to the side for now, but we'll bring it back down later. Not bad, you know, for the sake of, uh, er, given that you were aligning and cutting all these things that need to be bang on in order to fit. Mm-hmm. That was pretty quick. Yeah, where'd that sandpaper go? I don't know. There okay. it is. Knock these down real quick. And the test is always to hand it to the other guy <laughs> and see if he can put it together. I'm pretty sure I can put it together, but you know something's well made if the other guy can put it together. All right, we're lining up the... Mm-hmm. The holes. large part of the keyhole there. Mm-hmm. I like that so far, and I'm just going to give it a hug. Okay. No, I'm down. I brought the mallet out today for a reason. Yes. And I think you're setting on it a little bit, actually. Ah, okay, I am. All right. Mind your ears. Cover your ears, everyone. Beautiful. There you One go. More. Good measure. That assembles easily but snugly. Where's that going? Where is nowhere. it going? And nowhere. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that one. Yeah, it's going nowhere. That is awesome. I'm pretty pleased with that. So these are these are a nice tight connection. Yeah. I love using them. The beauty of them, again, compared to other fasteners that we've used, is that that dovetail really pulls things together, kind of no matter where your depths end up, even if you're a little offset on things. Um, other connectors, you really do have to get spot on, and it requires some trial and error. But with these, I've always been good to go the first time. And who knows? Maybe if you came back in with a, with a screwdriver and just backed those screws off a hair, it might be a little easier. Our yeah. fit would be ever so slightly different, so that's how you can kind of fine-tune it. Mm -hmm. Great. That okay. is awesome. That's a lot to digest. <laughs> a lot of cutting, a lot of marking. Uh, we're going to take a quick break for some announcements, right? As always, I hope that you have questions about this stuff. Please write those questions in the comments below the video. Uh, Ted will answer as many as he can in the chat, and any questions that he can't answer or that deserve a demo, he'll send to us, and we'll answer those live at the end of the show. Yep. In the meantime, do we want to start with our shot video of the week? Let's do our shot video of the week. Yeah, this All one right. is from Jim Milley, and Ned's going to pull that up. Reminder, we love, please, everyone send in your shot videos. We're going to share once, one every session. You can send that to sessions at shapertools.com. And if you have not had any luck during our in-show giveaways, this is a great way to give yourself a higher chance of winning something. Because everyone that we show their video, uh, everyone whose video we show, we send them a little something. Yeah. All right. How are we doing? All Good right. to go? Here we go. Good morning, my name is Jim Milley. I live in Mount Shasta. Uh, been here about three or four years. We are in the forest, so we have a pretty tight shop. We had to cut down trees to uh, build the shop, and we're gonna show you that today. This is our home. When we moved in here, we didn't have uh, a lot on the property, but we built a carport and some sheds and a uh, boathouse and we built this shop that you see in the distance. The building over here on the left is where we store our wood, our lumber. Um, and then we built this place. There used to be oak trees standing just like this, right here. We had this cut down and we had the uh, wood milled. <clears throat> and then we produced this workshop. You can see we have a lot uh, pushed into a very small space. The uh, heater keeps this warm. You can see it's 51 degrees right now, but it was 30 this morning when we started out. Um, most of the tools and carts and cabinets I built, we have a um, saw stop, the uh, miter saw. We have a lot of festool tools. We like those, of course. Uh, we have the joiner and the planer, the workbench, which I built here uh, few years ago and of course there's the uh, plate and there's the shaper tool itself we use that quite a bit 
we built a lot of uh, equipment with it already. I'll show you a few things in a few minutes. We use a lot of woodpecker tools. Uh, most of these we built ourselves. You'll see every little corner has something hanging on the wall uh, just to make maximize our space. The overhead shelves worked out really well. It was a product that just you can buy at the box stores and hang from the uh, rafters and it makes a lot more space. Right now I'm doing some uh, face frames and doors and uh, drawers for some cabinets. Most of the work I do is uh, small uh, knickknacks and boxes and then a lot of furniture. This is some photographs of what the shop looked like the day we started building it. My wife and I built this shop in exactly two months by ourselves. Had it finished off. Some of the things that I build, these are some benches, or excuse me, not some benches, but some uh, bar stools uh, from the plans that Shaper Tool provided. Uh, there's the workbench that we built out of Sapili, a table, a bedroom set, a lot of end tables and furniture, a buffet that we built years ago, um, cherry armoire we finished recently, and a TV uh, stand. So we do a lot of things like that. I say we because my wife helps me some pews for a local church, a lot of little boxes little stand for a chest set toolbox you saw over there in this my sense so we've done a lot of just uh, furniture and small gifts a lot of the little things like this are sort of my own design to hold small clamps anything that can move around easily in a shop like this is kind of critical uh, because of the short space that we have you can see that i had a problem with my saw stop but we got that, uh, the failure of the control panel, uh, got that replaced. Outfeed table helps a lot for clamping down some of the parts, especially when we're working on the shaper tool. So, yep, this is it. Uh, a lot of filtration we have going on just because we are in a small space. We have the roll up door, which allows us in the summertime to open up and get a lot more room in here. And of course we have our creature comforts we have the uh, refrigerator and the TV so we can watch uh, Shaper Tools, Shaper Sessions. Thank you. All that right, Jim. So cool. I love that. Thanks for sending us your shop tour. Hope you're watching today. And you know what I loved was that clamp organization. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. That's the one thing that I really took away from this video. Yeah. Hang your clamps from the threaded part, not from the pad. We've been doing it here upside down all along. <laughs> yeah, I really, I hope everyone enjoys these as much as we do because it's really cool to be able to see how everyone else does their thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, the last thing that we try to do in this little segment here is product announcements, right? Kyle Verbinder is going to be a new product for us. Now that we're done with this router bit, I want to show this one off. Let's do this down on the bench cam. You can see that this is uh, basically that connector shape just uh you know in cutter form so yeah. this cuts the shape of that connector out as a slot or a keyhole and uh, it's got that kind of land built in there and the dovetail right there it is going to come on an eight millimeter shank mm -hmm. so you're going to need that eight millimeter collet mm -hmm. and speaking of eight millimeter collets we've got three great new eight millimeter shank tools that are inbound for let's say mid to end of march yeah We've got an eight millimeter roughing bit. We've got a long six millimeter. I'd call that a finishing bit. It's very six sharp. by thirty. Same structure or same um, flute style as the eight millimeter long reach cutter, mm -hmm, but a little narrower. And what size is this one, Jake? That is a four by fifteen. Mm -hmm. So let me hold this. I'm especially enthralled by this roughing bit. So this is eight by thirty something again. Uh, right. Yes, yeah, same same structure as the other one, 8 by 35 But you can see it's got these teeth ground into it, which leave a little bit rougher of a finish, but they uh, they really... Let's put that in front of Origin. There we go. Uh, leave a little bit rougher of a surface, but they really, really remove material in a hurry. Mm -hmm. We thought the, the original 8mm cutter removed material in a hurry, but this one chews through it. Yeah. So... That's it's not cool. going to give you that finished quality edge, but depending on your on the application, 
that might be just what you need. Mm -hmm. All right. Plate setup. Plate Had setup. a little mental break. Let's get into plate setup. We've got a lot of questions about this over email, and if you think you have a good question for us uh, that we haven't covered in a while, just send that to us. Again, that's sessions at shapertools.com. And what we were asked this week is basically, how do you scan and grid and set up plate for the first time? So we're going to show how we would scan, grid, and set up plate, and then also import that Kyle Verbinder template from the Shaper Hub hardware catalog. Yeah. Here's the fun thing. It's really only something you need to do once. Mm -hmm. So exactly. you might as well do it right the first time. So I've got origin on plate. If this was your first time, uh, plate would not recognize this tape pattern. It wouldn't recognize this workspace. Since we've used this plate before, obviously it does. But regardless, we're going to go into scan and we're going to hit new scan. Start that scan. And we're going to get that picture of plate, making sure all of those domino markers turn blue. And you'll notice that I put a piece of plywood under here. That's because I like having a nice neutral background inside that window that is kind of material agnostic. So I can put whatever I want in there. And I'm just looking at basically a blank screen. Uh, what you can also do is as you use plate on top of other work pieces, you can add to scan, which kind of superimposes the image of what you're actually working on on top of your plate template. Yeah, sometimes it helps just to be able to see an image of it. It does help to just be able to see. So you can see if I zoom out here that I am looking at plate. I've got that fence. I've got the reticle retracted. I've got my grid points, X1, X2, and Y. And those are what's going to come next. I'm going to go into grid, make a new grid. I've already set up my engraving bit in here, which I'm going to use as a probe. That's backwards. You know, take the engraving bit, put mm -hmm. it in pointy side first, so you're just left with that solid quarter inch shank. And I uh, might not have put it in long enough. Let's make sure that that's down all the way. Yeah, I might uh, need to get a little more extension on this, actually. So we'll just pull this spindle out While because you're doing that, I'm not hitting these probe points. I noticed you did something. That What's that? We have talked about in previous sessions we talked about it in the origin pro tip session um but you tilted origin forward at like a 45 degree angle as you were scanning plate mm -hmm. now that's not something you necessarily need to do every single scan i it in fact don't do it for every single scan but in a situation like this where we want to have a Top super, down. Top, top yeah, down super view. top down because Origin's looking out ahead of itself, which it is designed to do. But for this kind of thing, we want to eliminate some of those shadows and perspectives uh, of the inside of the plate window. So that little tilt forward is totally okay to do. There we go. Now we're hitting those grid points. You can see the representation of this bit is stopping right there. My bit diameter is set to a quarter inch, which is the diameter of that engraving bit I'm using as a probe. The one thing I need to make sure of, though, is that this dotted line that represents my edge is up against that flat reference edge of plate right, hit, right there. So I'm going to hit probe one. I'm going to hit probe two over here, and that defines my x-axis. And now I'll go up here, get in this little hole, make sure that my line is on the same side as that edge of plate, hit probe three, and now I have this template, this gridded template, set up relative to the center of plate. Now everything is metric on plate. Um, I mean, you can use it in inshore metric, but uh, it's based off of 10 millimeter increments, so I'm gonna set this to a 10 millimeter grid, and I prefer to keep origin set to millimeters also when I'm working with plate. But as with everything with origin, you can do all of those unit conversions in the calculator. Yep. So now what I would do, what I like to do to reuse this workspace is name this something like plate template. Here we go. Uh, and we got we just got a question that is each plate unique? Yes, each plate is unique. Um, let's try to answer those toward the end. We'll do those in the Q&A. We got plate template here. Now I want to set this up for that Calver bender. Um, I've got this grid. I want to use this grid for all of my different hardware. So I'm going to make a duplicate of this workspace and 
rename that. Let's see. Plate template duplicate. There we go. So we got plate template copy. We're going to rename that plate. And we'll rename this Kylver Binder. There we go. Done. Plate Kylver Binder. Now, the one thing that we're missing is that hardware template. So over to you, Jake, on the laptop. We're going to go to the hardware catalog, which you can access via laptop, iPad, phone, anywhere that has a web browser. We're going to go and sync that information from Shaper Hub to Origin. All right, let's do it. I am on the Shaper Hub main page. Give All us right, just Ned's one pulling minute. us up over here. There we go. All right. Shaper Hub main page. We're going to hit that hardware catalog tab. This is your source for all kinds of hardware templates. And if the hardware that you're looking for isn't in here, there's a button at the bottom of the screen to request it. Yeah. And that goes directly to Russ. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to do that. Help me out here. K-E-I-L-V-E-R. -E 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 yep. You could also filter by manufacturer yes. off to the right there, and you can see in that drop-down Calver Bender. If you hit that, those options will just come up too. Bingo. All right, so we have two options. We're going to go to the smaller one here and sync to my files. Bada mm -hmm. bing, bada boom. Okay. Now if we go back over to the origin cam here, when I go to import and I go to hardware, you can see that Kyle Verbinder is right at the top of the list. So I can import that file with the custom anchor point, uh, rotate this so that it's oriented to whatever direction I want, uh, whatever direction I want that keyhole to be. When I was doing those vertical keyholes, that was at negative 90 degrees, and place that right there. Now I've got that origin Kyle Verbinder template ready to go. It. And just a reminder, too, if you want more tech specs on the system, go ahead and hit that Download All Files button on the page, and you'll get all of the manufacturer information as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's the show. So we built a piece of furniture using the Caliber Bender connectors. We showed you how to set up plate using uh, scan, grid, and templates on here to make a reusable template. Right on. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining. We look forward to seeing what you do <laughs> with the Kyle of Benders in the future. Uh, as always, when you're posting on Instagram or anywhere on the web, use that hashtag ShaperMade so that we see it. Yeah. Thanks a bunch. We'll see you next time. Cheers.